Hi everyone and welcome to this final part three of this paint long demo in soft pastel. Working on a still life project and if you haven't already please do check out parts one and two to watch the entire piece to this point. In this final part I will complete the cup and saucer and the little teapot. I hope that you enjoy watching and also if you're working along I hope that you will consider checking me out over on Patreon where you can download the high resolution images to help you. But I hope that you enjoy seeing this final part. So I get a little bit of the black areas, or the blackest areas on the shiny body of the cup blocked in. It's just going to help me see how much lighter I need to go on the saucer in the surrounding areas. already that black starts to make some of the other values look a good bit lighter which is what I wanted. But just like on the canister earlier there's still a lot of other colours being reflected on the body of the mug.
and this lovely light peach tint. You can see that just under the handle here. It's going to really help the handle stand out.
So some of these colors are really not colors that you might expect to see on a white saucer. It looks unbelievably dark in some places, but it really does look that dark to me as I'm sat here. I've deliberately chosen really contrasted and dramatic lighting so that I'll get lots of these colours. And the thing about working from photo reference is sometimes you don't see quite as many colours in the photograph as you do in person. So I really feel like I'm getting the benefit here of sitting right in front of this. And to me, still life is the best way to get into working from life because if you work outside plein air style then you've got the ever changing light of the sunlight happening and I think that's the most difficult one actually because that sunlight just changes so fast while you're working And that makes things so much more difficult. With this, I can really control the light here. And it will stay exactly the same for as long as I need it to. So that's in particular what I like about still life. It's scarier than working from photo reference but it's the one that you have the most control over. Just a few subtle little bits of reflection coming around here. So as I bring in more of these lighter colours, the light peaches and very pale brown earths or orange tones, it does start to take a bit more life. Just have to work very slowly up to the lightest values 
because I really don't want to lose that nice dark contrast. And I want the colours to be vibrant and for the shadows to really sink. So just be careful of coming in too soon with really bright colours. See if you can really work your way up to those brighter tones and that will help you judge just how light you need to go. Sometimes it can surprise you at how dark a colour can be even when it's being used as a highlight somewhere. So yeah, the trickiest thing, and I'm kind of holding my breath here again, that's why I'm not speaking, is definitely trying to get those ellipses to look close to accurate. That's definitely the hardest thing about this. So just trying to neaten up the overall shape of the saucer a little bit. That is easier said than done. That's, it's starting to look a bit better. Just add a couple of brighter little highlights around the edge of it here. And then just to finish off the black area of the mug, that's the, the saucer and most of the white parts pretty much there. So I'm very nearly finished the mug. I've just got the black parts to do now and they're really key to the whole effect because unlike the black of the tea canister, this is quite matte. It does have a bit of a shine to it. 
but the shine of the black cup is very different it's really shiny so there are some lovely bits of highlight on this that I've been looking forward to adding So it starts to get a little tricky now because there's less places to lean your hand. So the twist of this little handle is extremely tricky and you can see that at times I make a bit of a mess of getting the soft pastel to go on but as long as I get the pigment somewhere in the right place, somewhere in the region of the right place, I can still shape it into place using the pencils. More like here for the very finest of little lines of reflection, making use of the pastel pencil. Doesn't have to be a very bright highlight this one. The one just around the corner here is much more vibrant so I'm going to try and get that with a bit of soft pastel. So just testing out where the corner of it is first. So it's really these little bits of highlight that I love adding because they bring so much life to the piece. It looks quite flat for a long time and then all of a sudden you add some of these really effective little bits of highlight. But like I've been saying all along, if you haven't gone dark enough with the colours surrounding these bits of highlight, then they really won't have the intended effect And the pastel matte paper really is quite good for letting you add the lighter bits of colour on top of really dark colours like this. Pretty good for that. There is a limit 
to how bright you can get your highlights to look on top of solid dark, for example, or solid black. But most of the time I'm pretty happy with how brightly the soft pastel sticks especially can go on on top of solid black. So this cup really has been a tester. Definitely the hardest part of the painting so far. I think I underestimated this cup. Very, very tricky. Just that little peephole there for the saucer behind. Just making it a little brighter so that our handle really stands out. And I could do with bringing a little bit of warmth in there too. Really having to use this side of the cup just to, you can see the dirty mark on my finger there, just anchoring my finger at that point and that just helps me to balance somewhere Yeah, I think that helps a bit, just lightening behind there. So pretty soon I'll be on to that lovely little teapot. So far I'm really enjoying it. Such a change of pace for me. Almost always working from photo reference. And it's really nice to just walk into this room where I have this set up in my studio and just pick up where I left off. No computer screens to look at. Nothing plugged in, just my light. 
it's been a most satisfying project to work on. I hope that if you're working along that you too have been enjoying it. So just a little bit of, uh, this is BV7, one of my favourite unison colours. And it's going to help me create some of the very brightest little bits of highlight. I'm really just trying to get a sense of the 3D twist of the handle here. It's very tricky. Really honing in on where those highlights are going. Starting to get a sense of it. Very tricky. But it's definitely a lot of fun to try and bring the 3D out of my 2D sketch. Definitely something I will repeat more of. I love the challenge of painting animals and people. And a little bit of landscape as well. I enjoy all of those things. But I've got to say this has been really satisfying to work on. Although I have had to stop for lots of tea breaks. I wonder what put that thought in my head. It's fine, I always stop for lots of tea breaks anyway.
So on the rest of the cup then, we've got a lovely little line of reflection coming around here. some more of that lovely yellow being reflected. I'm certainly never going to look at this skirt in quite the same way again. I don't think I've ever studied an item of clothing of mine quite so much, but it has made an excellent backdrop for this. So don't even be put off trying to set up a still life, even if you don't have much fabric or bits and pieces in your house, I bet you've got something that would make a fantastic still life. This is literally just a skirt of mine using the fabric because of the way it drapes very nicely. I've got a lot of fabrics but a lot of them are patterned and for this I just wanted plain colour because you can see even with just plain colour it's never that straightforward. So try and give yourself an easier time by choosing a plain fabric to get you started. Imagine this had had a pattern all over it too. <laughs> I'd be here all year. But it's those things that often make really interesting paintings, so at some point I'm sure I will tackle something like that. Something with some pattern, some interest to it. even just plain fabric is very attractive. Makes you look for all those extra colours and shadows. a difficult little curve here and just working at it until I'm happy with it. You really can have several goes at something. Don't be afraid to smudge it in and have another go if you're not happy with something.
So again, it's a black object, but there's actually a lot of color on this when you start to look closely. I just love when you sit and stare at something for a long time, the more and more color pops out of it. And really the darkest part is over here where the handle is casting a really dark shadow on the cup. And really to either side of that we've got some quite light reflected colour. Again, just softening all of that in. Of course, like before, there are some really bright little bits of highlight. Again, just trying to find a sharp edge. Perhaps I'll use this colour because I can use that lovely sharp edge. Also break a little piece like this, find some extra sharp edges.
And where else have we got some little hints of reflection? More of this BV7, really light, icy blue. And a tricky one to get just around the edge. That's not too bad. Yep, almost there now on the cup, I think. these highlights back a little bit. Just soften everything slightly.
So just a few final little hints of reflected light and then I think I can call the cup and saucer and the tea pretty much done. On to the final hurdle that is the teapot. Okay, so I'm on to the final element. That's that cute little teapot. I'm quite a fan of teapots. I have quite a few. But for this composition, I really tried to go for something very plain and something with not any pattern on it. And I've gone for white. Well, partly because it looks nice in this composition and partly because I wanted to at least try to keep this a bit more simple and just focus on the lovely reflections that you get on a white object. So white is anything but simple, but in this case it was going to at least be more simple than some of my other teapots which have a lot of pattern and are quite complex. And what I really just like is the lovely shape and the interesting lines that you get from an object like this. And of course I like shiny things, so that was the main reason that the teapot was chosen. So I have lost my outline a little bit in some places, especially around here where the, uh, the fabric has overlapped it a little bit. But that's not a problem. So I'm just looking for all the shadows first of all. Just taking the same process that I use with everything that I sit down to paint. Looking for the darkest shadows first. using this lovely grey. This grey to me has like a touch more yellow in it than for example my uh, blue violet. And with this grey I'm enjoying the, the fact that it has some more yellow in it because we're surrounded by yellow in this composition. This was a good colour to use within some of the shadow areas on the fabric itself. I've used it lots within the teacup as well. So carrying those same colours throughout the whole composition, trying to find some colour harmony between all of these objects. So I really didn't have any idea how long this was going to take. I of course wanted it to be as short as possible so that I can make a good tutorial from it but I also didn't want to rush it so I really have taken my time and however long this video has turned out to be well I'm happy enough to do that rather than rush the process. So I hope that if you have actually watched this from the very beginning that you've enjoyed it 
uh, that you find some useful tips or some inspiration even just to have a go at your own still life. It's definitely an experience I'm going to repeat again. I've enjoyed this one so much. <laughs> again, I've got a dog in the room doing some ear flaps and uh, tippy tapping about on the tiles. So just uh, another heads up if you hear some strange noises in the background. There's a good chance it's not me. So I think I've spread the filming of this out over about four days or so. I split the fabric up over the first two days. On the third day I worked on the, the canister in the background and the cup and saucer. So I haven't done this all in one sitting. It may well be possible within a good long day of work, but with filming and um, having to chat while I work, I find I get tired much quicker than if I were just sat busily working on this. So yeah, I need a few more breaks. So quite a long time spent on it, but it's also a reasonably large piece. I didn't want to go too small, just making things a bit more difficult to create the detail. I really wanted to encourage some more painterly marks and try to keep things a little looser. So if you're trying to uh, encourage yourself to work a bit more loosely, I always recommend that you work a bit bigger than you're used to. That's what tends to work for me. It gives me an opportunity to make bigger marks. It discourages you from picking up the pencils and getting into smaller detail too soon. And there's still plenty of small detail, even on this scale. So just using a little point on the bigger pastel stick. To try and create the, the mouth of the teapot here. And the end of the spout. And perhaps I come back in and I use some pastel pencil to help shape this a bit better. But as always, trying to get the main marks down first with the bigger pastel sticks. Of course there are some lovely areas just catching the light on the teapot. I 
and those are really going to help with the form. Purposefully had this little bit of the spout just tilting around enough so that it will catch the light. And if you haven't already, do go back and watch my first video from this series where I take you right through actually setting this still life up. How I went about that, what decisions I made during that process. And really I made that video to inspire many of you, hopefully, to have a go at setting up your own still life in your house. It's not an easy thing to do, but it's wonderful practice for your compositional skills. Really making you analyse how something is lit. And even if you do normally work from photo reference, having a go at stuff like this will improve that work too because it makes you analyse those images differently. Really looking at the lighting in them, what's going to work most successfully in a painting. So it's just a useful exercise for any style of artist. But in that video, I had the spout of the teapot just facing away a little bit more and it wasn't catching that lovely light. So that was one adjustment that I made just so that it would catch a little bit of the light too and really show up. Again, using the background area to help shape the item that's in front. Again, just making sure that all of my surrounding areas 
are dark enough so that any of my highlights really stand out. So again, just starting to look for the bigger areas of light and shade on the teapot. The light comes around till about here. And we've got some lovely reflective shadows, especially around here, just catching the yellows of the surrounding fabric. And always thinking of the 3D shape that I'm working on. So that shadow line where the light comes around and meets it. It's really got to have a bit of a curve to it just to describe the bulbous shape of the teapot.
So I'm just trying to get a little hint of the shadow side of each part of the teapot. This one little object has several quite difficult areas. Even just this little handle on the lid on the top. Each part poses a little bit of a challenge. But you can see how beautifully that light colour goes even right on top of that solid black background there. I do love the strength of pigment that you get from Unison Pastels. Not a problem to add really bright highlights on top of dark colours. So yeah, some tricky little areas on the teapot, so I'm really just taking my time. Again, if I'm not talking a huge amount at some moments, it's usually because I'm kind of holding my breath and just trying to aim the point of the pastel in the correct place. So a little bit of toing and froing as I get the pigment down in the right place, then come back in, perhaps neaten it up from the other side. But if you persevere, you can normally get those marks just where you want them. And of course trying my best to get each side of the teapot quite symmetrical, focusing on those lovely elliptical shapes. And this lovely blue violet. It was in the teapot especially that I could see lots of this colour and I was looking forward to bringing more of this into the painting because I just love 
how that colour looks against those background yellows. Do love a little bit of complementary colour in there. So like with all the other parts, this is really just the blocking in stage, figuring out what I'm seeing, where the colours are coming from. And unlike when I'm looking at a photo reference, I can see much more colour in front of me with this piece. It's definitely true that our eyes pick up much more colour than the best of camera lenses. So I do love working from photo reference. I love bringing some life into that 2D image. And that's often what you're doing, trying to look for extra colour. Um, adding some of your own artistic license to a photo reference to really bring more colour out in it. But with a project like this there actually is so much colour in front of me that in some ways it's difficult to decide how to simplify it. And that's what I'm really loving, just having so much colour going on in the scene in front of me. I'm doing my best to include as much of it as possible.
I really am seeing a lot of warmth bouncing off of the fabric onto this and that stands to reason because the teapot is sitting surrounded by all of those rich yellows and oranges. So just now trying to go back over my shadowy lilac blues and look for any little areas where it's more with a brown earth tint. There are literally moments when I just want to sit and stare at the composition in front of me for a while. So I've tried to keep my work quite fluent in this so that I'm not stopping and starting the filming too much. But really, if I were doing this with no camera rolling, I would just take moments where I'm not painting, not touching the paper, just sitting observing what's in front of me and that really is the beauty of still life it's not a living thing well usually not and you really can just sit and look at it for a long time I've still got a huge amount of respect and also a little bit of fear of the the plein air art because uh, in that one you don't have control over the lighting usually. You're at the mercy of sunlight. And it is ever changing. When you're painting a plein air, if some clouds come across, then all of a sudden every value in your painting changes. So yeah, that one still frightens me a bit. I've still got many many things that I would like to tackle but I think that this project in particular has made me fall in love with still life I have done it a little bit before but mostly just sketching I enjoy using charcoal it's quite similar to soft pastel it's got the same smudgy qualities and the same movability on the paper. Just without all of that fantastic colour, which in this piece I've really enjoyed. I've done little studies before of one item perhaps, but never a full composition like this um, where you really take it to a finished painting. And that's what I've really enjoyed about this. So definitely something that I'll repeat and hopefully get better at over time. This has definitely inspired me to be even more creative with the setup. And I've learned so much from doing this. And I hope that by sharing it, that perhaps you have too. So I would love if you would let me know in the comments below if you've enjoyed this one. If you'd like to see more of this kind of project. It's good for me to know these things, if it's something that you really want to see, if it's worth me filming it. But I know for sure that I'm going to work on something like this again. So just making sure that I've got the base colours how I want them. 
before adding the top bits of highlight because it's much trickier to change those base colours once you've added in the subtle little highlights. Um, it's much trickier to do it afterwards so just having a look at where else I can add more colour and blend a little bit. And I think really I want to make the contrast between this little area on the spout and the shadow part. Just want to increase that contrast a little bit. And I feel like that little spout is so important, just the way it's contrasted against the darkness of the canister. So I'm really spending a bit of time on that part. Just really thinking about the shape of it. Then bit by bit I can start to bring in some of the more subtle little bits of highlight here and there. Of course most of these bits of highlight are quite smooth and straight in their lines really showing the smoothness of the teapot. And a lot of the highlights have pretty crisp edges to them. And that was the main difference between, for example, the highlighted areas on the canister and the highlighted areas on the shiny cup. One's got quite a matte black and one's a very shiny glossy black and the main difference in creating those two textures was to really make these highlights very fuzzy and soft edges and then you can see just how crisp some of the highlights on the cup are 
and that really shows the difference between those two textures. So that just comes from observation of the surfaces. But there are, of course, many little tricks to showing different types of texture. But the teapot's going to be pretty similar approach to the teacup in that many of the reflected items are going to be quite crisp, so a lot of those little shapes needing refined quite a lot with crisp edges just to show the sheen or the gloss of the teapot. So just making sure that I get the nice contrast with some really dark shadows in around the base of the teapot. Try to avoid using too much black as I really want to pick out many other colours. But in most of my work I usually do have a place for black. I really like working from that far end of the value scale. And I do know that many artists don't use any black at all in their work. And that is also a very valid method. For example, if you look at the Terry Ludwig pastels, they don't actually make a black. They make everything but black and they make some beautiful alternatives to black but their whole ethos I think is about not using black and using colour instead and I do know many artists who use that technique to great effect but personally I really like using black you don't want to overuse it, it's a colour that you want to be careful with. But I've always been a Caravaggio fan. And I like the drama that comes from black. And 
And I think it really depends on the style that you're wanting to paint in. Perhaps if you're looking to be more impressionistic, black is a colour that you might want to avoid a little bit more. But even then, if you look back at some of the, the best impressionists, Manet for example, I mean the clothing of their time, their age, was mostly black so pretty difficult to avoid painting portraits that have black in it. But they used it so well. But of course many wonderful artists who don't use any black. So let's get this bright side of the teapot blocked in a little bit. And the light from the little lamp that I'm using to light all of this, it's, uh, it's pretty yellow. There's already a lot of yellow in the composition with the fabric that I chose, but even the light itself has quite a yellow tint from it. And that was really purposeful as well because I just wanted this to look very warm with no cold light shining on it. So these lower layers, as always, really important to me just to get the correct colours blocked in. And then I can really start to blend it together and add some of those all important little highlights to finish. And also using my pan pastel blenders again, just to shape some of the highlights. And also to drag some of that darker pigment
of course some of the most satisfying parts are when adding some of the very definite little bits of highlight. Just choosing a suitable piece. Again, I can neaten that up a little bit. Again, it's all about the crisp edges. When you want to have something look very smooth and shiny.
So yeah, one of the most fiddly little parts in the whole painting, I think. Just trying to shape this how I want it. a nice bright bit of highlight on this side and a bit more subtle on the other side using that nice BV7 again shape that better. <sighs> so just getting a few little bits of highlight on there really help start to bring it to life. So that's really the order of things. First bit of blocking in. Then really working my way around the piece on those bits of gradient of colour. Doing all my blending, all of the smudgy work first. Then just dropping in those little bits of crisp highlight. And it gets a little bit more tricky at this stage because before I was using the teapot area to lean my hand. I'm running out of places to lean my hand. But if you just take your time, I find I'm really slowing my breathing down at times. Just uh, really taking my time on making some marks. Trying to stay true to all those ellipses that I created in the first stages of this piece.
So let's just get this handle blocked in and then I'll be mainly down to the task of adding final highlights. So again I've kind of got to find my outline for the handle again as I lost it a little bit with the dark background. I've got a rainy day here today, so even the cat's inside. I've now got him sitting grooming himself in the room, so again, any licking strange noises in the video, it's not me. I'm too busy doing this to be making strange noises, but I am surrounded by furry creatures who may well be coming out on the audio. I'm not sure if it'll pick that up. And I've also got a neighbour who's using a strimmer today. And I've just had so many distractions from this piece that I'm reluctant to stop filming again, so... I'm hoping that none of those noises are coming through very much on the audio. Hopefully all you can hear is my chat and the nice noises that the tools make on the paper. But apologies for any other noises that are coming through in the audio. Some days it just can't be helped. So again, just using the background to help me shape And again, looking for those main areas that are catching the light.
that handle going in just instantly starts to make it look a little bit more finished. I really feel like I'm on the home stretch now. But I'll be sorry to get to the end of this piece because I've really enjoyed it. It's been a tough challenge, but one that I definitely hope to repeat again.
So once I start to get some of these brightest little bits of highlight on, it should really start to take on the shiny appearance. And that is truly the fun part.
so we're almost there I really feel like I could spend a lot longer on this and maybe I will play with it some more after the camera stops rolling but I think I've pretty much shown you my whole process for this anything else that I do after this will just be some minor tweaks just maybe fixing the shape of some of the elliptical areas a little bit may have gone a little bit askew during the painting process but on the whole I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out and I would really love if you do have a go at your own still life I'd love to see so if you do post it on social media or anywhere then I'd love for you to tag me and uh, that way I'll get to see if you if you post it up So that is me finished and I'll share some close-ups here of the finished piece. I really hope that you enjoyed seeing this come together right from the planning stages. I certainly enjoyed working on it and I hope to work on more projects like this in future. I made the decision to release this entire series to my YouTube channel so that everyone can watch it free of charge but I would love to make more of these both for my patrons and for here on YouTube. So if you would like to see that happen and you enjoyed this, please do hit the subscribe button here on YouTube. Show me some support and help my channel grow. I would also appreciate if you leave me some comments or feedback below the video. And also if you can consider checking me out over on my Patreon channel you'll find all of the high resolution photographs for this project if you want to work along. Also on my Patreon channel is my full catalogue of real-time tutorials and most of my Patreon tutorials come with both narration and I colour code them so that you'll see the colour I'm using pop up as a small code in the corner of the screen. I haven't done that with this project because I wanted to release it here on YouTube for free but it's the support of my patrons over on my Patreon channel that allow all of this to happen as it takes me many, many hours to edit all of this together. So I think I've finally earned a real cup of tea and that's what I'm gonna go and do now. So thanks very much for watching this and until next time, happy pastling.